Then she lifted from her lap a great stone of a clear green, set in a silver brooch that was wrought in the likeness of an eagle with outspread wings. And as she held it up, the gem flashed like the sun shining through the leaves of spring. This stone I gave to Calabrian, my daughter, and she to hers, and now it comes to you as a token of hope. In this hour take the name that was foretold for you, Elisar, the Elfstone of the House of Elendil. Then Aragorn took the stone and pinned the brooch upon his breast, and those who saw him wondered, for they had not marked before how tall and kingly he stood, and it seemed to them that many years of toil had fallen from his shoulders. Hey guys, Yoiston here, and I hope you all are doing well, wherever you are in Middle-earth. Today we will be taking a look at the artifact of Arda that was wrapped in the legacy of Aragorn, King Elisar. I'll link some related videos and articles that helped with this video in the description and cards to further outline this conversation, and I hope you all check them out. My friends, I really appreciate you all being here. Let's begin our adventure. As with many people, places, events, and items of the Elder Days in Middle-earth, there's actually a lot of ambiguity surrounding the Elisar or Elfstone. While it plays a rather small part in Tolkien's vast legendarium, it is actually an item closely tied to motifs of healing, fate, and longevity or everlastingness, being a tie from the Elder Days of the past to the days of the present, or of the late Third Age. Now, I address it as a singular, but it's possible that there were actually two Elisar stones. The stone or stones were green gems of mighty magnificence, for it had the light of the sun trapped within it. It was beloved by the Noldor, and any who looked through this stone saw things that were in reality withered, burned, or old, as healed or renewed, as if in youth. And the hands of one who wielded the Elisar stone brought healing to all they touched from injury or hurt. We'll get back to the healing aspect more in a bit. If there were two Elisar stones, it is said the second was more subtle and clear than the first, but with less power in light. The Elisar stone Aragorn received from Galadriel in The Lord of the Rings was set in a great brooch of silver in the appearance of an eagle with outspread wings. Let's take a look at the multiple versions of this stone's history before going on to account for its overall significance. The first version we have is that the Elisar stone was made by a jewel smith of Gondolin named Anurthil during the First Age, who was the greatest smith of jewel craft among the Noldor after the passing of Feanor. In an alternative version, it was Celebrimbor, son of Cúrufin, who made this first stone, placing him in Gondolin at some point before its fall, though we know he dwelt for a time in Nargothrond. But whoever its creator, it came to Idril, daughter of King Turgon of Gondolin, and she would give it to her son Eärendil after the fall of Gondolin. With it, she hoped her son might heal grievous hurts in Middle-earth, but he should deliver it to none other. Indeed, while Eärendil dwelt at the havens of Sirion, that place and the people and beasts who dwelt there healed and prospered. The stone of Eärendil would always be with the mariner when he was out at sea, and the thought was always with him that he might find his mother Idril again, for his first memory of Middle-earth was of the green stone above her breast as she sang above his cradle when Gondolin was yet standing. As a bit of a tangent here, but still related to Eärendil, Aragorn would tell Bilbo to add a green jewel in the Hobbit's Song of Eärendil, and Bilbo would add reference to the stone, for the ranger thought the stone of Eärendil to be important. And of course, this also foretold Aragorn's wearing of a similar green stone. Eärendil, of course, would go into the west, and the stone would eventually come to Yavanna, who gave it to Lorin or Gandalf before he went into Middle-earth during the Third Age. Anyway, Galadriel would receive the stone from the wizard Gandalf in this version of the story, and she would be heartened by the care of the wizard and the Valar, whose thoughts still turned to Middle-earth. And while Gandalf said Galadriel could use it to make her land the fairest dwelling in Middle-earth for a time, she would have to pass on the stone when the time came, for the one who would receive it would take the name of the stone, Elisar he would be called. This would of course be Aragorn, who we will talk more about in a moment. First, let's take a look at the alternative version of the story that has Celebrimbor making the second Elisar stone for Galadriel. The lady grieved similarly about the fading of the Elder Days, and she wondered about her place in the world during the Second Age. Celebrimbor, out of love for the Lady Galadriel, whose heart rather went to Celeborn, made the second Elisar stone in Oregion before Sauron arose again. And behind the three elven rings, it was the greatest of Celebrimbor's works, for he had studied alongside Anurthil and Gondolin. 
But even this is problematic, for it is at the end written that Celebrimbor made both Elisar stones, the first in Gondolin and the second in Oregion, so I'm unsure. In this version, although Galadriel used the Elisar stone to bolster and make fair her realm of Lorien, the ring Nenya would come to her, and she thought she no longer needed the second Elisar stone giving it to her daughter Celebrian, and then Celebrian would give it to her daughter Arwen, and it would eventually come to Aragorn II, who was called Elisar. Now, there's definitely a ton of ambiguity and confusion here, and it seems to be another concept that Tolkien was further developing but never quite finished. The different versions of the stories are shared in the Unfinished Tales in the section about the history of Galadriel and Celeborn. With either legend, we can be sure that one Elisar stone was made in Gondolin in the First Age, either by Anurthil or Celebrimbor, and that stone went with Eärendil. But we cannot be sure whether that was the same stone that came to Galadriel by way of Gandalf, or if Celebrimbor made her a second one. Galadriel's Elisar stone would then, according to the Fellowship of the Ring, which is the most canonical source we have, be an heirloom of her family, before she gave it to Aragorn and Lothlorien. Either way, Aragorn would be given the Elf Stone by Galadriel and Lothlorien in 3019 of the Third Age, and he would take up that name foretold for him in his kingship, and he would eventually be known as King Elisar. After being given the gift, Aragorn's kingliness became more apparent, and he wore the stone on his breast. From Lothlorien, to the Houses of Healing, to the end of his very life, Aragorn would carry the Elisar Stone, even using it to bid Frodo farewell when Frodo returned to the North. The literary themes and motifs at play here are also excellent, for before his death, Aragorn names himself the last of the Numenorians and the latest king of the Elder Days. To wear an artifact that came to him from Eärendil, his distant ancestor, who was a father of kings, would be quite incredible if that is the true version of the Elisar story. Aragorn was, in truth, the last memory of the Elder Days in men, so it would make sense for him to bear the Elisar from the First Age, and from his forefather. Next, Aragorn lives to be one of the last kings with direct ties to the elven people, so to be named Elisar the Elfstone is fitting for him. Furthermore, one of Aragorn's names, Thorongil, meaning Eagle of the Star, fits the physical description of the Elisar stone he was given. And finally, and most importantly, Aragorn was a healer. As we discussed earlier, the Elfstone was said to have properties of healing and renewal, and Aragorn, who had the healing hands of a king, healed many in the Houses of Healing, likely aided in power from the Elisar Stone, among other things. The later history of the Elisar Stone is shrouded in mystery. Whether the stone would pass on to Aragorn's descendants or would be buried with Elisar himself is unknown to me, but surely it was tied to Aragorn's fate for the rest of his life, even as the last elves faded from Middle-earth. Thus, we come to the end of our tale about the Elisar Elfstone. From the Elisar Stone, we see the beauty that comes from an artifact and theme of healing. It's far better to rebuild and restore than to destroy. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope you all enjoyed this video on the Elisar Stone. If you did, please be sure to hit that like button and share this with a friend. What are your thoughts, questions, additions, and corrections on the Elisar Stone? Let me know in the comments below. This has always been a very fascinating artifact of art to me as it is a small but powerful part of Tolkien's Legendarium that is closely connected with my favorite character. To further support the channel, please check out our music channel, Facebook, Twitter, Merch, and Patreon for podcast and Discord server. All of those links are in the description below. Royan and I just did a monthly podcast over on Patreon, and this time we discussed the holidays in Middle-earth. If you're interested, please check that out over on our Patreon. I want to shout out our Valar tier patrons as well. Adrian De La Tour, Chris Ortner, Peter Shepard, Samuel McBee, Jonathan Putnam, Mark Kralik, Blair Scouten, Tobias Goldner, and Ryan Ramsey. Thank you guys so much, it means a lot to me. Finally, don't forget to subscribe and hit that bell button to join the Men of the West and all of the free peoples today, and I'll see you all again next week with an epic character history, and a poll for which character that will be about is up on our community tab, so please head on over there to vote. Everyone, as always, thank you all so much for joining me on this adventure. Until the next one, my great friends.